Hey guys, uh, Stuart Webb with Offline's Fishing Company. Um, today I'm going to be tying a little squid pattern for GTs, uh, originally based on Cam Musgrave's garlic butter, but this is a smaller version. Tying it on a Favo Mustad top and hook, either bucktail or I have deer belly. Over that, quite a bit of flash and then some nice saddle hackle and then working forward some temple fox um, and then obviously through the middle of the fly as we tie it, I'll show you where to place them, but we've got some six more eyes with a bit of solar res onto cable ties so they sit nice and nice and proud out the side of the fly to, to give that the squid eye. So starting with the fly, uh, on the hook I'm going to dress it down. I usually stop just before the point, the point of the hook. The idea behind the fly is that it's lightly dressed but it has a big profile. So it's easy to cast but it's effective in the water, the fish can see it. At the back of the hook what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie in a little bit of deer belly, a good uh, healthy, healthy pinch of, of deer belly. Just get rid of all those smaller fibers that you're not going to need. Just place it onto the shank of the hook, just kind of over where your, where your thread stops and just tie it in gently to start with. If you pull it too tight initially it'll flare. As you walk forward then you can start cinching it down so it's nice and tight and it's got a bit of a taper. And then obviously just check that your, your bucktail or deer belly is nicely completely around the hook. Next. I'm going to start tying in my hackles. I've got four of them prepared already. Obviously, try and get the, the tips the same length, cut them off and you can just kind of just pluck those first couple of fibers just to give you something neater, a neater surface to work off of when you're placing the fly. Start placing, work your way around in a circle. Get one placed in. So you've rolled your vise around so you can see the other side, kind of get your tips to match. Um, Keep following the circle, just tie the tip in, get it nice and straight, cinch it off a bit. You don't want to go too overboard on the thread because then again it's going to be a bit heavily dressed. Keep going on my third one, third hackle. So when you're finished with the back part of the fly, you've basically tied your hackles in a barrel completely around the, the shank of the hook. Okay, so there you go, basically I've got the tail, the tail of the fly. I'm going to put a little bit of flash over that, wrap it, kind of wanted to just, just sort of end at the same length as the feathers. So again, like I did with the, like I did with the hackle, you're gonna tie it around the hook. So do a couple of pinches at the top, tie it in gently, and then you can spread it as you go. So it's evenly spaced over the hook. And then turn your fly over and do the same on the top. So you're slowly making your way forward. Um, you've got quite a nice profile there already. Just kind of take off a few of the tips, make it a little bit jagged. Then next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie in a little bit of Temple Fox just to kind of finish off the front of the fly and then over that do the eyes and then patch in some more Temple Fox over that. Again, using tan and white. So you're going to tie that so the tips of the material are facing the eye of the hook. So backwards. Just place it and gently work it around the shank of the hook so it's almost fully around the shank of the hook. And then again, like you did with your, with your bucktail, just tie it in softly for the first couple and you can really cinch it. Kind of get it nice and spread so it almost looks like when you fold it back, it's going to be completely around the shank of the hook. So you kind of just Fold that back and work your thread through, so your thread's in front of it. Don't tie on top of the material, tie just in front of it and build it up so the thread pushes the material back. If you tie on it, then you're, you're going to lose your profile. Um, so just do a couple wraps as tight as you can. Next, I'm going to use my eyes. The nice thing about the cable ties is you can choose your length according to the size of the fly you want to tie. So with these guys, I'm just going to butt it up and you can kind of imagine where the squid's eye would be. So, measure them both, cut them off, cut them off equally, and then again, the tip of the cable tie can be quite bulky sometimes, so what I'll do is I'll just taper that off to just give me a smaller surface to, to tie on. Got my cable ties prepped to put the eye in, so butt it up again, do a couple of soft wraps just to kind of get it to, to sit on the 
the shank of the hook. So then you're gonna tie on the other side, try and get them equally matched, kind of lengthwise and also position on the side of the fly. Just slowly tie it in, gently to start. Make sure it's even and slowly get a bit, a bit more tension. And then over the front of that, we're gonna do a little bit of a little bit of olive. Um, like to like to mix the colours up a little bit. You're gonna turn that around, and then again, like you did before, front or back tying it rather. So the tip of the material is facing the front of the, the hook, the eye of the hook, and just slowly tie it in. Tie it off nice and tight, and then. Get it nice and spread around the shank of the hook. Get it to fold back. And again, building up a thread base just in front of the material so it stops it from folding forward. I'm gonna put one more patch. I'm gonna use white. Um, the white that I'm using is nice and long so I want it to basically cover all of my um, previous colors that I've got there and just go right over it. So it kind of, it has a bit of depth um, in the color. Nice healthy pinch, cut it nice and low to the leather. And finally, again get it nicely placed. This one's quite important because this, you're gonna finish off your fly just in front of this. So you wanna make sure that you've got a little bit of room just ahead of the material once you've folded it back to finish off your fly nicely. Give it a nice, a nice head. Get that nice and tight and equal. And again, spread out your material and slowly work it back at the same time, trying to find a gap for your thread to come through so you don't pinch any of the material when you, when you finish off the head. Just slowly start pulling up that head in front of the material. Your thread is not there to pinch down the material, it's there to push it back. Um, you've already tied your material to the shank of the hook that supports it, so this thread is just to build it up and push the material back, give it that profile. Once you're happy with your, the way your material looks and the shape of your head, you can just slowly finish off your fly. You can use whatever tool you have, just do a couple of loops and just cinch it down. So you finished it off, just trim it nice and short, and then it's almost there. You can see the fibers are a little bit knotted up, and what you can do is just go through with your bodkin or a big pin and just pick it out. Just pick it out slowly so there's no knots. It kind of blends itself. So left with something, something like that. Again, the idea behind this fly is it is it has a big profile, it's very light, um, and it has a lot of movement in the water. Those are three keys to any fly for, that I'll tie for a GT. Okay, so once you've tied off and uh, trimmed your thread, just put, you can use super glue, um, it's perfectly fine. I've just got a little bit of solar rays here, um, and this is thick hard formula. Um, it's not really important what you use here, it's just to stop the thread from unraveling. And just hit it with a UV light, a couple of seconds and it'll be pretty much gone off and there you go that is your little squid fly for GTs thanks for watching guys enjoy tying and I uh, hope to see you out just soon